Hi, Nolan Johnson here for Real Time with SMTA AI. I'm speaking with Thomas Forsyth Hi from there. Kaizen. How are you doing today? Doing well. Fantastic. I understand that here at the show, Kaizen is uh, busting some myths. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're the cleaning experts, that's what we do. And of course, we live in an era of no clean soldering materials, which is an unfortunate development from our perspective, <laughs> uh, jokingly. But what it means is that cleaning expertise is, is a bit diminished out in the industry. And as things, devices are getting bigger and packages are getting more dense, form factors are getting smaller, the need for cleaning is growing and, and there's a gap right. of, of knowledge. We present a lot of papers, we're presenting three here at the show this week. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, gaps that don't, isn't super technical. Sometimes it's just sort of fundamental stuff. Um, that if you've never had any exposure to it, the, lots of things are easy to comprehend, but they're not always intuitively obvious. Mm -hmm. So what we do with the Mythbusters myth is we bring in some, you know, somebody from one of the soldering world, some of the cleaning equipment guys, some of our people sit there, and we, we've got some questions and start some dialogue, and then we get, get some people that are wandering by, and they ask a question or two, just to sort of talk about things in a, in a, uh, a very uh, informal way to, to try to fill in some of those gaps. So it's been, it's, it's gone pretty well. It's the first time we've tried it here, it's going pretty well. So uh, we're hoping to, uh, to build on it as we move forward. Good engagement with people on the show floor? It is, you know, I mean, it, you know, and of course that's part of the SMTAI show is it's all the smart guys. So, uh, but no one can know everything. So therefore they're always, you know, trying to learn. Uh, and as they're, you know, they're into sessions learning the deep technical stuff and then they're down here talking and, 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 and adding to that. So it's been, it's gone pretty well. Fantastic. I understand also that there is some uh, work that you are doing around software. Right, well, and again, it comes back to, to evolution. Uh, we're, in the, we're the cleaning people, we develop cleaning agents. Cleaning is, is fundamentally a responsive uh, uh, world, much like at home. You use different materials to clean your hair, clean your kids, clean your pots and pans, clean your, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Well, it's a bit the same in, in our world, and you're also doing different things. If, if, you're, uh, if you've driven your car through the mud or something, well, it's a bit more difficult to clean than if it was just going to the grocery store. That, that, so there's a, there's a variety of materials there and they need to be run properly. Uh, most materials today are, are aqueous in nature, meaning it's mostly water with some active ingredient. Mm. Kind of like shampoo and you know detergent in your dishwasher. Uh, but unlike those devices, being precise is kind of important. Sure. Um, particularly for, for uh, systems that we want to run for days and weeks and, and months and things. So we've been selling uh, control systems for 20 something years that did that. They me measure it, add a little material, add a little water, keep it all balanced. It was all quite local. You know, you had to walk up to the machine to do it. You had to walk, punch, punch. it was automatic, but if you wanted to change something, you had to hit a few buttons. Well, what we've done over the last year or two is evolved that and said, okay, you know, uh, if I can open my garage door on my phone, if I can check a bank balance on my phone, why can't I be aware of what's going on with my cleaning system on my phone? Makes or at my workstation. So we decided to, to bring the, uh, the cleaning world uh, in, into that sort of regime, and, and we've done that. Uh, the Kaizen Analyst is, is our brand name for that, and it's really a data analytics tool that has a, a variety of things. Sometimes it's, it's, some of the systems have different degrees of, of automation. Sometimes it's just monitoring. Sometimes they're, they're not terribly dynamic systems, but I still want to know. Right. Okay, other systems are much more dynamic, so not only do I want to know, but I need to, I need to intercede to keep things in balance. Right? You know, if I'm juggling, I'm interceding all the time. You know, if I've just got something sitting on my shoulder, you know, maybe I can just stand still and it'll be okay. So different, different data sets that come back to them. So we've been working on this and continuing to develop this over the last two or three years. And it's really tied to this whole idea of, of making sure we get that right information to people. But it's not just moving the gauge. You right. know, if I simply have a gauge, but now I've moved it to your phone, well, that's, I still have to look at it to know, right? So no, we've got exception alerts, uh, whether it's via text or, or uh, uh, email, whatever you prefer, uh, sort of things that let you know, oh, by the way, you, you've drifted out of the ideal range, you're in the, you should you know, notice sort of range. It's, plen it's great to have plenty of data and to be able to watch the process all right. the way through or even go back in time and take a look at what the process was at a particular point in time, but when action needs to be taken to keep it in the, in the window that's of tolerance. What that, that's what those exception alerts come from. It's, right. you know, the automatic systems, of course, are making those adjustments unless someone unplugs one of them or something. Right. Um, 
but those exceptional alerts alert the engineer or whatever, whoever the appropriate people are to, okay, we've got to go do something. It's time to intercede. So now's the time, not, oh, what happened yesterday? Now, one of the interesting things about data collection, it turns out, you know, in our industry, particularly here in North America and Europe, uh, you know, we make lots and lots of exotic, gee whiz, important stuff that when, it, if, if you do have some sort of field failure for whatever reason, often there's a, a post-mortem investigation to see if there's right. a learning to be had to, to prevent that again in the future. So when we first introduced this, one of the really interesting things people asked right away was, well, how hard is it to get to the data from a couple of months ago? And so well, it's not really very hard, you know, a couple of clicks. I mean, it, you know, it might take a few seconds. You know, it's not sure. like, you know, snap your fingers, it's a, you know, one potato, two potato, and they're like, oh no, that's okay. So that's that's a little faster than going to find the files that are up in the attic. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, right. it's quite a bit faster than that. Right. Well, it turns out that that archival process for having that data is something that, that was of keen interest uh, to people. And so, and, and that was built in, because of course you'd keep the data, of course you make it searchable, because then you can play around with it and do some analytics and, and whatnot. And, and now, now you're drifting more toward that whole idea of how am I doing today versus yesterday? How am I doing today versus you know tomorrow? Am I doing the same a month from now from today? This idea of not so much predictive analytics, but being able to compare and make sure you're in the same place. Which is a good thing to be monitoring when you're dealing with the cleaning process. Well, well, you know, many processes. We happen to be cleaning guys, so that's that's what we're focused on. But but the reality is, you know, especially now we live in an era of short runs. So therefore, the, the, the settings and things often change. Obviously, mm -hmm. the components change. Right. Uh, but the idea of if I can compare things, gee, I made uh, Gizmo A, you know, back in uh, March, and I'm making Gizmo A again here this week. The fact that I can grab both sets of data and make sure I'm, I'm serving up the same, not only doing it the same way, but but perhaps uh, making sure that my quality on the other end is the same is, is a good feature for people. How are, these, like how are these tools being made available to your customers? Is this an add-on? Is this a completely different product? Well, what it is is it the uh, the control, the, the monitoring and control systems are their own little, they're their own tools, that they're a gizmo, they're a thing uh, that the customers uh, you know buy, install, and use. And then the data package is just a data system. It's a, like like any other, you know, people have analytics packages for lots of different things. It's just targeted here, and it does uh, a growing array of, of uh, calculations that uh, people find interesting to uh, so compare I could, how we're doing. So I can doing. add that data package to my existing Kaizen right, equipment. Right. That's right. If, if if we are, that's right. It's it's retrofitable to the systems that we've been selling for years, and uh, that's part of what we've done because these are very long-lived assets. You know, we we build. You know, we built tanks that, you know, the cleaning, the, the fundamental how you do cleaning, you take a cleaning agent, you put it on the dirty part, you make the dirt go away part. You know, that doesn't change much. Um, so the control systems have been uh, very robust and, and very long lived. So we've, we've managed to make sure we can upgrade those people into these newer uh, capabilities if they so desire. Oh, that's fantastic. So if I'm um, interested in looking at this new product, who should I contact? Well, if you're here at the show, you can come by the booth. Uh, and bust some myths. And, and bust some myths and, and ask a few questions, or you can reach out to us on the website, uh, kaizen.com, it's, it's pretty easy. That's probably the simplest way for most people today. And of course, we're out and about. We have uh, technical people and salespeople scattered around the world. Uh, we have staff in 11 countries and operations in four, so we're pretty easy to find. Um, so uh, reach out, we'd be happy to, uh, to have a conversation. Tom, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thank you, have a nice day. And I'm Nolan Johnson for Real Time at SMTAI. Really?